This is one of the most disturbing fast food stories on the internet. It was a popular legendary KFC tale that surfaced the internet around the year 2016, when a customer's photograph of one of his fried chickens went viral. There were many allegations made by the customer and users on the internet, but KFC has since responded defending their innocence. All in all, we decided to shed light on the bizarre scenario and make a disturbing animation inspired by the whole ordeal. Here's what it looked like. A few years ago, I went on a solo road trip to see some family. I was forced to leave later in the day, as I had to finish up my last shift at work for the week before getting my time off. I don't mind night driving, but a few hours into it, I realized that I was starving. I'd been running around like a madman all day preparing for the trip, and I'd forgotten to eat anything but a slice of toast for breakfast. I stopped at the next exit and looked for somewhere to get some grub. Unfortunately, I found myself in one of those desolate stopover towns where a bunch of sketchy gas stations, cheap motels, and greasy fast food joints were cluttered around the intersection of the interstate in a random rural highway. After that, it didn't seem like there was any civilization for miles and miles. And as I was pretty far out in the middle of nowhere, almost everything was closed. The only place that was open was a KFC, which looked like it had been left unrenovated for decades. I love fried chicken as much as the next guy, but KFC was never my choice. In that moment though, I was hungry enough that it sounded delicious. Strangely, as I pulled into the parking lot, looking through the dining room window, the place seemed pretty packed with people, despite being past 10 o'clock. But the moment I walked in, I caught a whiff of something nasty, like rotten milk. And as I pinched my nose, I was struck with another realization. The place was actually almost empty. The shapes that I thought were people were actually just a ridiculous number of cardboard cutouts of the colonel, hauntingly bent out of shape and fixed into place to make it seem like they were sitting at the tables or waiting in line. All of them seemed to stare at the front door, and many of them had been scribbled on, like some kid with a sharpie tried to pull a prank on the place. The only real person in the dining room was this hulking brute crammed into one of the corner booths, chowing down on a huge order of fried chicken. He looked a little... special. Like that thing from the boonies. He was huge, but his face was deformed, and his proportions were all out of whack. Thankfully, he didn't look up from his food, so I ignored him. I put aside my questions about the kernel cutouts, and figured the owners were just trying to appear as though they had more business than they actually did. The place didn't smell great, but the way that lame giant in the corner was feasting led me to believe that the food couldn't be that bad. I approached the counter, where unfortunately the red flags continued to go up. The cashier behind the register was the palest, greasiest, scrawniest country local I've ever seen. He was so short that I had to think his growth must have been stunted or something. Like he was inbred out of some fifth generation ranch. And when he smiled to greet me, his teeth took me for quite a shock. Many of his teeth were missing, and the ones that were left were crooked and coated with plaque. How may I help you? Um, I just need a second to look at the menu. Not a KFC regular, I see. No, not exactly. You from around here? Uh, no, just passing through. Going far? I don't know. How far is far to you? Are you traveling alone? That's none of your business, respectfully. And, uh, I'll take a number one with a Coke, please. That'll be right out, Tumbleweed. Hold on, what'd you call me? He didn't answer me. He just slinked back into the kitchen and disappeared. I pulled out my phone to pass the time while I waited for my food, but of course there wasn't a single bar of service here. Though not a minute later, the cashier came back with my meal. Here you go. Enjoy. I already knew just by how quickly the food came out that it wasn't going to be fresh. He picked up some stuff that had probably been sitting out for hours. For a moment I considered leaving and looking for somewhere else to eat, but I'd already spent the money. And my stomach was growling so loud that I'd eat just about anything as long as it was warm. I sat down and took out my food. As I picked up what was supposed to be a chicken breast, I immediately noticed that something was seriously wrong. It was entirely the wrong shape and it had a tail. I picked off the breading and saw a black fur underneath along with whiskers and eyes. And that's when I realized it was a rat. I flipped out and immediately snapped a photo of it. I then stormed up to the counter holding the rat in my hand with a napkin and shoving it in the cashier's face. What the hell is wrong with you? Are you blind or are you just stupid? Stop smiling, punk, you served me a rat. Look at this, would you eat this? That looks finger licking good to me. I threw the rat in his face and he barely flinched. Screw this, I'm out of here. I hope you go bankrupt, you inbred weasel. I threw him the finger and walked off, heading for the door. Unfortunately, my exit was blocked. That giant simpleton from the corner had gotten up and stood in front of the doorway, trapping me inside. 
Don't be mean to my big brother. He's a really good gun. Show a little respect for your elders, dimwit. Are you kidding me? That's your big brother? I turned around to point at the scrawny cashier. But to my surprise, he was standing right behind me, holding the deep fried rat in his hand. I tried to be quick and get past the troll blocking my way, but his reaction time was much faster than I expected. He grabbed me instantly and put me in a vice grip with his freakishly large hands on my upper arms. He then lifted me in the air so my feet couldn't touch the ground. I was like a little kid being bullied on the playground by some older kids. Say you're sorry! Now! Nah, uh Ricky. I think it's a little late for that. The man had his chance and he wasted it. He doesn't know I'm the best cook in the county because he never tried my homestyle recipe. Let's change that, little bro. Hold him down! No, please, you can't! You're insane! I struggled, trying to break free, but it was no use against the strength of that freak. The cashier attempted to force open my jaw, but I clamped it shut. I wasn't going to let him put that rat in my mouth. I gritted my teeth, waiting for somebody to come by and put a stop to this. But nobody came. An eternity seemed to pass by without a single car passing. And that's when I realized. I was so far out in the country that I was beyond help. I was in their territory, and they knew it. All the cardboard colonels were staring at me, waiting for me to obey. It was only a matter of time before they wore me down, prying at my jaw until I didn't have the strength to put up a fight anymore. Don't do it! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I told you it was too late for that! Now open wide! Here comes the plane! He crammed the rat into my mouth and forced my jaw to clamp down on it. Immediately, the cold flavor of garbage and sweat took over. I could feel every wiry hair and every chewy bit of sinewy meat. But the maniac wasn't satisfied with me just taking a bite. He held my mouth shut and pinched my nose so I couldn't breathe until I swallowed. As soon as I did, I gagged, wanting so badly to throw up. I used every ounce of willpower not to, because I knew they would probably make me eat it again. They didn't loosen their grip until I'd eaten the whole thing. I crunched every tiny little bone and ate every single organ. The worst part of all was the tail, which got stuck in my throat on the way down. After what felt like hours, they let me go and I fell to my knees. Wasn't that finger licking good? I didn't even think about responding. I scrambled up to my feet and bolted out the door, running to my car and driving away for dear life. I couldn't bear to think about seeing my family after what had happened. So I got back on the interstate going the way I had come from, speeding over 100 miles an hour. To this day, members of my family ask me why I didn't show up to that reunion. And every time I answer them, I lie. I'll never let them find out what happened, but at least the internet knows. On June 12, 2016, a KFC customer posted a viral photograph of a piece of KFC chicken on his Facebook page that appeared to be a rat. You can clearly see the body, along with its long string of fried breading resembling a tail. KFC has since responded to the allegations by sending out pictures showing how the original photo clearly showed white meat and couldn't possibly be a rat. A very similar case occurred at a Chick-fil-A, which we showcase in our Chick-fil-A video for those that haven't seen that yet. At the end of the day, we'll never really know if it was finger licking good or not. This has got to be one of the craziest KFC stories on the net. Of course, we couldn't make another KFC video without featuring the Kentucky Fried King himself, Colonel Sanders. There are many old vintage clips of the icon, letting the world know he thinks his chicken is finger licking good. But maybe after this video, you'll understand why. Here's a tale in honor of the legendary Colonel himself. This is a true story. I know it may sound far-fetched, or in today's words, cat, but I can assure you it was 100% legit. It happened to me years ago when I used to live alone. I had to get out from under my parents before I could even think about getting a girlfriend, so naturally life forced me to be independent and take care of myself. For a while there, the only thing I could cook was instant ramen. When I actually wanted to eat some real food, I ordered Uber Eats. I figured I would teach myself to cook my own food when I needed to, but those delivery fees ran me out of money before I knew it. I was almost broke, but I still had to eat. So I decided to save some money by cutting out the middleman and getting the food myself. I went out for a stroll one night to see what I could find down the road. That way I could save on gas too. The problem was, I didn't live anywhere close to what could be called the center of civilization in my area. 
so there wasn't as much as I was hoping for. That, and it was already dark by the time I thought to get dinner, which put me on edge about walking around the random cluster of stores at this isolated intersection that my house happened to be built near. Mostly everything was already closed down with the lights out. Even the gas station was done for the night. Aside from the occasional car speeding through the nearby overpass, there didn't seem to be a single soul on the whole street. I was just about to admit my mistake and head home when I saw the light from KFC. I walked towards it absentmindedly, unable to resist the glow. I'd never eaten at that KFC before, but I did recognize it. I'd passed by it a million times already in the few months that I lived on that road. I always thought it was kind of dingy, but I'd never really gotten a good look at it. And on an empty stomach, the place looked pretty alright. There was a sign on the door that said store hours, but all the times had been crossed out, so I wasn't sure if the place was actually open. I went in anyway just to see. At first, I didn't see anybody. It was oddly quiet in there without the sounds of people talking but I could definitely hear the buzzing of all the machines back in the kitchen. Uh, hello? Anyone back there? Anyone working here at all? There was no response. But, since I walked all the way out there in the dark, I was hoping that if there was anyone working there, they were just in the restroom or something. I decided to wait by the counter and took a seat. I was just going to give them a few minutes before giving up, but I ended up zoning out on my phone for a little while. Then, out of nowhere, this sleazy-looking man wearing a white suit with a KFC bucket over his head appeared walking through the kitchen and up to the counter without making a sound. I stood up from my seat and shouted to him. Hey, you work here? <laughs> no, I own here. Uh, what? I couldn't understand him, so I got up to the counter to hear him better. He kept <laughs> laughing really quietly, like he was holding in some hilarious joke. What's so funny? <laughs> I own you, too. Come on, dude, give it up. Stop pretending to be some stupid mascot. You can own $6 out of my wallet if you make me some food, but I'm not gonna sit here and play your little game. Where are the employees? Right here. What? Speak up! Jesus, what the hell is going on here? I said... Right here! It's not you, is it? There's no way you work here. Come on, man, cut it out. Cut it out or I'm leaving. No, don't leave yet. You'll miss the delicious smell. Of what? Fried chicken? <laughs> no, idiot. The smell of one of my employees taking a life-altering dump from a horrible case of salmonella in the bathroom right over there. <laughs> Enough! Take that bucket off your head and take my order now or I'm calling the cops! You don't even work here, do you? If you did, you'd drop the act right now and do your job! Damn, this hoe got the hottest looking fingers. I mean, no! Please don't call the cops! I've got all the little workers you need, right under my bucket. If you'll take it off for me, they'll take your order. No! What are you playing at, you sicko? No more games, I promise. Just take off the buck. You wanna eat, don't you? Alright, man, fine. But I swear to God, if you're messing with me, I'll, I'll end you, okay? Oh, that won't happen. If I had been more confident, I would have just knocked it off with a quick slap. But I was so weirded out by this dude that I felt like any sudden movements were dangerous. I leaned forward and reluctantly lifted the bucket from the man's face. <laughs> there was an entire fistful of somebody's severed fingers in his mouth. I screamed and jumped back, but he just stared at me, smiling, laughing. <laughs> he then spat the fingers at me, drenching my clothes with his saliva and blood. Then, an employee finally managed to get out of the restroom, and I realized why he'd been stuck there for so long. Half of his fingers were missing, and from the looks of it, he might have been forced to himself. Help me. So, finger looking good. Lay me your fingers, you selfish brat! I was absolutely terrified. Before I realized it, they were both approaching me with their hands out to grab me. So I ran. I bolted out the door and sprinted home, hiding in my bedroom for the rest of the night. I forced myself to sleep, hungry and traumatized, vowing to pretend that whole thing was just some awful nightmare or paranoid delusion. Years later, however, after coming clean about this with someone close to me, their response made me realize I need to tell this story. I regret not going to the police with this sooner, but I hope they can still catch that animal.
The next story was inspired by a horrific incident that took place at a KFC in the United Kingdom. The victim in question was a woman who took a photo of her absurd incident to social media, which ended up becoming viral for an X amount of time. More details during and at the end of the story. Here's a dramatized version of the alleged occurrence. Since my parents passed away, I've lived with my estranged relatives. And when I decided that I didn't want to enter college, I was forced to work at KFC, where my uncle and I had to work long, grueling hours. It wasn't much of a bother, though. After all, I grew up in a household with fatty dishes prepared in the kitchen and greasy plates served on the table. However, sadly, I wasn't close to my relatives, especially my uncle. He used to lock me in the cellar whenever I disobeyed him, leaving me in the dark to sleep with dreadful rats. I despised him and that feeling was mutual. We'd see each other at work, wearing fake smiles whenever we crossed paths, which was humiliating. Fortunately, though, I had many friends here who shared similar interests. In fact, we all had corpulent physiques, flaunting them proudly, despite the insults we often received from other people. At work, I had a necessary distraction, tasks and friends. Most of the time, they kept my world afloat amidst working hours and short breaks. But whenever it was time to go home, I felt uncomfortable sharing the vehicle with my uncle, who always found a way to criticize me despite my good behavior. <sighs> you look like a piece of meat. What did you just call me? Uh, I, I, I mean, my niece is so neat. You look put together, but you could lose some of those flaps, he said condescendingly. Well, you're one to talk. Look at you. You're so large, I'm surprised you could fit in this car. I replied with angst. What the hell did you just say? He took a sidelong glance and said puckishly. You're going to regret ever saying that to me. By the way... You are a piece of meat. Moments later, he took a chicken leg and crammed the juicy meat down his throat without my permission. Hey, that's mine. I was saving that for later. Girl, you look like you ate KFC, McDonald's, and Burger King. Have a salad. <laughs> He replied callously. We fought every single day, and sometimes I thought it was a miracle we never got into a car accident. Then, as we arrived home, I was so famished that I headed straight to the kitchen, grabbed an entire cake from the fridge, and gobbled it all up. My aunt, also fat like my uncle and cousins, held a rolling pin, hitting me on the head, as she said. Take it down a notch, you filthy pig. Aren't we feeding you enough in this house? Just look at yourself in the mirror. No man in his right mind would ever pursue a lady like you. That's no lady, honey. That's an animal. They had been pinning me down for as long as I can remember, but somehow I got so used to it that anything they said didn't matter anymore. The following day, my aunt would prepare breakfast for us in a dining room that looked more like a pigsty than a family space. My cousins would fight over the food, threatening each other with forks and knives, while my uncle remained heedless of their misconduct. Hence, like most days, I decided to skip breakfast and prepare myself for work. If there was something my uncle was right about, it was that I was such a dawdler. So, after taking a shower and fixing myself up, I wasn't surprised to see my uncle gone with his car. No problem. I got used to commuting to work anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. In fact, this gave me ample time to check my pet chicken. Yes, you heard that right. Making minimum wage at KFC wasn't enough for me to sustain a cat or a dog. Besides, having a pet chicken was a great companion at home that made me feel loved and appreciated. There was always something about it that made me think it could understand me whenever I needed an outlet for my rants or when I wanted to talk about my favorite comic book series. Jerry was the only thing no one was permitted to touch. Hello, Jerry. How are you today? I said with euphoria as I took a peek inside the coop. My heart pounded fast when the only chicken I would never harm suddenly vanished. Jerry... Jerry? Jerry! I searched for it all around the backyard and inside the house, but it was nowhere to be found. I even asked my aunt, who smirked and shrugged, saying it wasn't her responsibility to look after it. That's when I remembered my uncle leaving for work without me. No, that's impossible. He'd never do it. My hunch was telling me he'd done something terrible. 
but I didn't want to believe it. And so, part of me tried to convince myself that I was only being paranoid. Hence, I told my cousins to keep me informed if they ever found Jerry. Then, seconds later, I was off to work. While I was on the bus, I only thought of Jerry, worried sick that he might have escaped somehow was chased by a dog down the street. However, there was no way it could have gotten out on its own, and any of my deranged relatives could have been the culprit. When I arrived at KFC, I heard my psychotic uncle laughing maniacally from a distance. <laughs> It sent chills down my spine, and I felt the urge to rush into the kitchen. Then, as soon as I entered those doors, I was horrified at seeing blood spread across the countertop and my uncle's apron soaked with a dense mass of ruby red fluid. No! Slowly, my uncle turned to face me, the look of apathy written all over his face. He then grabbed a chicken drumstick and began showing it up my nostrils while saying, Oh, what a waste! You missed the fun part! Doesn't that Kentucky Fried Chicken smell so good? Smells familiar, right? What? What the hell is with the face? That's what chickens are for! <laughs> I couldn't believe what I had just heard. I pulled the drumstick out of my nose and began yelling at him, saying, I hate you! Jerry was the only one I really cared for! You had no right to do this to him! I won't let you get away with this! Moments later, he raised a butcher knife while licking off the blood dripping from it and said, I told you you'd regret it if you ever messed around with me again. I swear on your parents' grave that I'll take everything else valuable to you. Now get to work, you piece of meat! Since my other colleagues were either busy taking orders at the counter or cleaning tables and floors in the dining area, it was just my squalid uncle and me. <laughs> Then, moments later, we heard a squeal from the dining area where a female customer threw her food at one of the cashiers and grumbled. Is this some kind of sick joke to you? There's a freaking chicken head in my meal. Where's your manager? I want to speak to him now. Then, minutes later, emerging before her was my uncle, laughing like a maniac as he boasted. Well, you hit the jackpot, miss. That's my niece's pet chicken right there. <laughs> Here's the photograph of the infamous chicken head below. The lady has since shared her ordeal by posting a review along with a picture of the entire fried chicken head on her social media. She has since given the popular food chain a rating of two stars. I think it's a win for the franchise, as it is better than one star. No, don't leave yet. You missed the delicious smell. Of what? Fried chicken? <laughs> no, idiot. The smell of one of my employees taking a life-altering dump from a horrible case of salmonella in the bathroom right over there. <laughs> Enough! 